Hello, seniors. We have made it to the local scholarship kickoff. Um, so I'm going to go through how to apply for our local scholarships, um, as well as some statewide ones. Um, this is this is not a straightforward um, system, and that is because there are lots of different kinds of scholarships. So let me just. There we go. So who the scholarships are for. There are scholarships for all levels of post-secondary school. So trade schools, community college, four-year colleges and universities, but you won't receive any that you don't apply for. So who gives away the scholarships? Local, state, national businesses, groups and individuals. Most are outside the school. There are actually very few that the school gets to decide on. Um, and that may, means school employees. Um, so these are people who want to help young people reach their goals and give back to their community. And so they've chosen to raise money or give money to help out with post-secondary education. So when a group wants to give money away, they can make the rules. They can decide who they want to award to, how they want you to apply and what information they want. So what that means is that you will see that they're not streamlined. They're not like college applications where they pretty much ask the same thing. Many of them are, but you will also see that quite a few are unique and want specific things. Um, I always say that if I was doing a scholarship, maybe I would say, well, you have to like chocolate. And so everybody who applies would like chocolate. So, um, and I can do that because I'm giving away money. So, um, so basic scholarship applying, most will want your transcript and letters of recommendation in some form. So that differs a little bit and I'll go into that. Um, most will want to know your estimated family contribution that comes directly from the FAFSA and we will reuse the letters of recommendation written for college. This is very important. We are trying to not put too much on our teachers right, teachers right now as they're starting the hybrid. Um, we have all of the letters that have been written for your college applications and we're going to reuse those and we can upload those. So Ms. Parks and I will upload all the letters even from the teachers and of course I have mine. Um, so you must follow all instructions and meet deadlines. I have found that scholarships are not going to take late ones. They are giving away money and part of that is that you need to apply on time. Um, so make sure you qualify before you apply. For example, if it's a Hampton scholarship and you live in Seabrook, don't bother applying. Um, they're going to give it to somebody who lives in Hampton. Some want essays or written answers and some do not. You can imagine which scholarships um, get more applicants, the ones without essays. So something to think about if you really want to increase your chances of getting a scholarship. So because partly because of COVID this year and being online, um, but also because it's going to make it easier, we have tried very hard to get all of our scholarships into an online space with as few applications as possible. Winnicott at Dollars for Scholars has been around for years and this is an amazing group of people who run this, this um, database. There are over 65 scholarships under one application with over 100,000 given away each year to Winnicott at graduates only. Um, so, and if you have seen any of the awards night, they take up at least 50% of the scholarship time of what they're giving out. The nice thing is it is kind of like the common app that it's one application um, that you fill out just the one time and you apply to many scholarships. So the next online type of application I'm gonna tell you about is called Going Mary. I have no idea why it's called that, um, but we have put as many of our local scholarship applications onto this platform so that you will, again, be going into one system and filling it out once and able to apply to multiple scholarships. Um, the difference with this is there are very different questions for, for each of the scholarships. You might answer several different questions and there are many different deadlines. So it's not just one deadline. You'll see that once you get into it. Um, many of these are for Winnicott only, but some may be regional as well. And then we also have a few additional individual applications that didn't fit anywhere else that I'll also tell you about. So Winnicott at Dollars for Scholars. Um, so the applications for the 2021 scholarships will be accepted between January 15th 
and April 30th. April 30th is a very hard and fast deadline. Um, I don't know if it's over vacation this year, but you will definitely need to apply by April 30th, no exceptions. The application is entirely online and you will also be receiving a flyer and instructions in a green envelope that will come to your house in the mail as well. Um, so one application for all scholarships, one deadline. So the rules for filling out the Dollars for Scholars application. When it asks you for your transcript, you must put Ms. Parks a email address. The reason for this is that this is a national, we are, Winnicott at Dollars for Scholars is part of the national Dollars for Scholars. And the way Dollars for Scholars works is that they allow only certain emails to send certain items. So the transcript must be sent from Ms. Parks' email. If you, send it, if you send the transcript request to me, it won't allow me to upload it. The primary reference has to come from me. It will not let anybody else upload it. So, so make sure when you're in the system and it asks for transcripts that you put Ms. Parks' name and her email. And for the primary reference, you put my name and my email. Some, very few of them, but some of them do ask for a secondary reference. If you apply, if you're eligible for one of the scholarships that does want a secondary reference, put the email of a teacher who has already written a letter for you, and then they will have to upload it. One of the reasons for this is that the Dollars to Scholars system is name blind. So when I go in to upload your letter, I have to take your name off all the letters. So I remove your name. Um, I actually put in a bunch of X's because they want it to be anonymous as they are reviewing the applications. Um, so the way the system works is points are awarded based upon meeting what a specific scholarship wants. So when the committee goes into the system, they are going to see how many points were awarded to a student um, based on what that specific scholarship wants. So for example, there's a scholarship for a basketball player. So if you didn't play basketball, you're not gonna get very many points and you will not be eligible or very high on that list for that scholarship. Make sure you completely fill out the application and you must submit it at the end. Um, there's at the end, it says, do you wanna submit? And you have to say yes. Um, if you don't completely fill it out, it also cannot be submitted. And this happens every year that we have students who do not actually complete it or don't submit it and then not, you, you're not eligible for a scholarship you won't get one so check your email if there are problems or missing items somebody from dollars for scholars will will contact you it will not be from me so i don't know i don't see what's completed um, i have no access to the dollars for scholars database so it comes from them they are so awesome about sending out emails saying, hey, you know, I think that you wanted to submit this, but you forgot to, or you're missing this item. Um, they are amazingly good at that. They really care about making sure that everybody has access to this. Please check your email and respond if they tell you there's a problem. They also want me to let you know that sometimes they do get new scholarships kind of late in the game. So before April 30th, maybe it's worth checking back one more time just to make sure that there aren't any new scholarships to hit that um, that button to apply to. And I've already said it, but do not miss the deadline. There's no, you will not, you will not be eligible. So the flyer will be arriving in your mailbox as well as I'm going to send it an email. I'm going to put it on the website. Um, and this has very specific directions. A lot of the ones I've just gone over about how to log into the Dollars for Scholars. Um, you go to student and parent tab and start the process. Um, one thing to point out is that you want to use your, it's the student's application. Every once in a while we have a parent email get in there and um, you don't wanna do that. So the detailed instructions are available downloaded on the web page. And as you fill out the sections, they turn green when complete. Incomplete means that you won't be considered. So please make sure those are green. In the financial section, you will be asked to fill out the FAFSA EFC number. Um, and again, that makes you eligible. If you don't do that, then you won't be eligible. 
This is at the end of the Dollars to Scholars application where it says apply to all scholarships with a red apply button. That basically means that you are eligible. So for example, if you didn't play basketball, you're not going to be eligible to apply for that particular scholarship. Um, the easiest thing to do is to say apply to all scholarships with a red apply button, but you could go through one by one. So, but most people don't, they're just gonna do apply to all scholarships with a red apply button. So other state, state and local scholarships that we have, um, we have placed as many as possible onto Going Mary. So this is one location to apply to local scholarships. Um, it is similar to Dollars to Scholars in that it is online and it is streamlined to that you're not filling out application after application. You will receive an invite to Going Mary to create an account within the next day um, by January 15th and you'll fill out your profile. And once you indicate when a Winnicunit is your school, you will be able to see all of the local scholarships that are only for Winnicunit students. Um, if you will also, so Going Mary is a huge national database. You're also going to see other scholarships nationwide that you're eligible to, to apply to. And of course you are more than welcome to do that. Um, to, if you just want to see the local scholarship list, there's a tab that says local scholarships and then all of ours will come up and they all say WHS at the, at the beginning of it. So each application is unique and individual and have their own questions and deadlines. I cannot stress this enough. There are many deadlines. So um, even when you go in to fill it out, you will see the deadlines are all on there, but there will be a variety of deadlines. So make sure to read over the application to determine you qualify. And then when, when you are asked for letters or recommendation, please only put my email and Ms. Parks. We have access to all the teacher letters and of course to my letters, and we do not want the teachers to have to spend time uploading them over and over. Um, email both of us and we'll get all of your letters uploaded. Once your letters are uploaded, you can see that they're there and you can apply them to other scholarships, even though you won't be able to actually read the letters. You'll be able to see that you have two or three letters. And as you apply to scholarships, when they want letters of recommendation, you can tell it to take those letters. So they're gonna be reused over and over again. Once we upload the letters, um, then you don't have to keep asking us to upload them again. They're in your system. Um, Going Mary will let you know about non-local scholarships. You can apply for as many as you want. If you want to just see the, I already said this, but if you want to see just the local scholarships, then click those. Um, some do want documentation of community service. Email Ms. Parks, she will send you at the school shows for your hours. And if you don't, do not match a scholarship, it's due to what you put on a profile. So again, a scholarship for a Hampton resident will not match a Seabrook resident. There are scholarships, these, so these additional scholarships don't fit either Going Mary or Dollars for Scholars. They tend to be the statewide ones. Um, so there are a few major databases with quite a few scholarships on there. The New Hampshire Charitable Foundation is, um, they actually give some of the largest scholarships statewide. And this is an online application that will request an email to upload letters or recommendations, letters of recommendation, the deadline is April 16th. And again, that is a hard and fast ap um, application deadline. Um, this one, I get lots of emails for uploading the letters. And so I keep track of that. I will tell you that this particular re email request for letters tends to go to the spam filters. So if you send it to me or a teacher, please send us an email that you have applied because last year we discovered that all of these requests for letters were going to spam email. Um, I am very on top of that because that's my primary job, but some of the teachers did miss them. So um, best thing to do is if you need to upload a letter to New Hampshire Charitable Foundation, put our email in there, but also shoot us an email. So the American Legion gives out quite a few um, scholarships as well. They are individual. Um, these are a little bit different in that you will have to print these out. So they require official documents. And what that means is that your official transcript comes directly from us to, to the American Legion. You can't send it. So that kind of puts us in the position of that you're going to need to 
bring to us or send to us your filled out application, we will print it out and we'll have to send everything in one packet. Um, in order to do this, you need to have those documents to us by March 12th so that they can be there for the March 15th deadline. Best practice would be to give Ms. Parks a heads up that you are applying to one of these scholarships so she gets everything ready. So when we get your application, we're just adding your application in with your letters of recommendation and your transcript and sending everything. Some of them do have very specific letters they are looking for and they're not all from the school. So as you are filling those out, just be very careful to follow the directions. So after applying, what happens? If you're chosen as a recipient for a scholarship, then you'll be invited to the awards night on the Wednesday before graduation. We will send that to you in the mail and also during via email. Um, you won't know which scholarship you earned until that night. It's very top secret. Most scholarships are chosen by committees outside of the high school and we don't know who they choose until they send us the name of the recipient. Um, so we often don't know until late May who will be invited to that scholarship night. Um, most scholarship money is sent directly to the college and most of them actually go the second semester of your freshman year. Um, and there'll be a lot more information about that once you receive a scholarship, but it is, does not typically go for that first semester. They wanna actually make sure that you attended. And so when they send the money that there is a student it's going to. Um, and also you're gonna hear me say it a bunch of times, but definitely write a thank you note um, to any of the scholarship entities. Just another reminder, if you haven't filled out the FAFSA um, or any of the other financial aid forms that you now need to really get that done. The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid is really the big one that all colleges require, all post-secondary. Um, the CSS profile is only required by some private colleges. Unfortunately, if you apply to a college that requires it, you do need to fill it out to get any kind of aid. So just making sure you check that. So um, now I would like to show you a couple of the um, couple of the forms I was telling you about. So this is the mailing that is going to come to you in talking about when it kind of dollars to scholars. As you can see, all the directions are still on there. The directions to request your transcript and recommendation is on here and also their email to ask any questions. You're more than welcome to ask me questions. Um, every year I get a little bit more familiar with what they ask and can answer most of them, but if I can't, then we'll reach right out to them. Um, this is Going Mary, and this is what it looks, this is our list of scholarships. So when you register on the site the, and get the local scholarships, these will all come up. And as you can see, I was talking about the deadlines, they do vary. Um, and so each scholarship has its own application. Um, and so once you get in there, it'll make more sense. This is the American Legion site. These are individual applications. And um, so these are what I was talking about that these are all due around March 15th, um, that you would need to bring us your completed application and then we would need to mail it out. Um, each of these applications has, has different requirements um, and is for different populations. So going through and just checking those out. This is New Hampshire Charitable Foundation. Um, this is their big one, the four-year bachelor's program. Deadline is April 16th. And you can, the selection criteria, it is largely financial need, academic merit. Um, but this is one that I would definitely encourage to everybody to apply to. They do, they do give a lot of money out to our New Hampshire students. So, um, and that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to help. Um, I will also just again say scholarships are not as streamlined. They are very individual. So you really have to keep on top of the applications, what they're asking for and what their deadlines are for, when their deadlines are for. So um, we are happy to help you, but we really need you to be on top of that because scholarships are not very forgiving if somebody doesn't fill it out correctly or doesn't fill it out on time. So we're here to support you, but you definitely need to communicate with us. And certainly this year, whether you're remote or coming to school, it's just a little bit harder this year for that kind of communication. So 
Thank you. Have a good day.